Hi everyone, thanks for joining, uh, joining us. My name's Sarah McIntosh, I'm from Clean Tech for UK. It's my great pleasure to introduce um, Mike Wilson from Polestar and Anders Breitholtz from Paper Shell, and they're going to talk to you about their Moonshot project. So, over to you. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, good afternoon everyone. My name's Mike Wilson. I'm uh, from Polestar R&D in the UK, um, and I'm the principal project lead for advanced engineering in interiors. So, for those of you who don't know what Polestar is, we're an electric vehicle company. Um, and what we want to talk to you about today is some of the initiatives that we've got going to try and reach for a moonshot goal of achieving uh, a zero carbon automobile. So, um, we know that we're a long way away from uh, meeting the uh, target of 1.5 degrees in automotive. We're not moving fast enough as an industry. We're still heavily reliant on fossil fuels uh, and all of the inherent processes and supply base that goes with it. We know we need to do something different. We need to change. So how are we doing that? We have a project called Polestar Zero. Um, the, the aim of this project is basically to achieve a, a new automobile at zero carbon. Uh, by really looking at ways we can use research and we can find engineering solutions to mitigating wherever a greenhouse gas is emitted. So um, the slide that you can see now, this is the one that I like to use in the pub when people say, why should I buy an electric car? So the bar chart on the left is a conventional Volvo XC40 uh, with an internal combustion engine. Now, the carbon that's generated in manufacturing that car and running it on fossil fuels for 200,000 kilometers is around 58,000 tons. The bar chart on the right is uh, the Polestar 2. So, absolutely, be open and honest, it takes a lot of energy to build uh, an EV car, a lot of carbon to build an EV car. So, that orange bar that you can see there on the right-hand side, that's the battery production. Um, and the, the darker gray section is the rest of the car. But the key message, and what I really want you to take away from it, is that if you ran that uh, Polestar 2 from wind-powered or uh, hydro-powered uh, electric, over 200,000 kilometers, it would be uh, 27,000 tons. So even with what we've got in the market now, we're making it less than half the amount of carbon emissions. But that's still not enough. So Polestar Zero aims to focus at the orange and the, the dark area um, on that bar chart. So that's how we manufacture the car all the way through production, from cra from basically from cradle to gate, and then at end of life. So as I've mentioned, we're going right the way back on the supply chain. We're looking into rare earth minerals. We're looking into how polymers are produced. So way past the kind of traditional automotive um, reach, effectively, um, and going back to where our materials are actually uh, produced, how we process them, how we compound them, and then uh, looking at how we manufacture them into components and then into the end uh, vehicle. So we're doing a lot of introspection. We're looking at what we do in our plant. We're looking at what our suppliers do, all the way through the different tiers of the supply base. Um, and finally, we're focusing on uh, end of life. It's a massive ask. You know, it's very, very complicated. Hence this kind of term that we've been using of a moonshot goal. It's not traditional automotive engineering. Um, and it's a completely different radical approach to automotive engineering. So this is our timing plan. Um, we've started the project now. We're embarked. We're on this journey. We're in the research phase. Um, so. We've been hiring people from a variety of backgrounds, not traditional automotive, but kind of more material specialists, real kind of experts in their field to help us go all the way back in the supply chain to, um, to minerals, polymers, all, that kind of th all of those kind of materials. For the next few years, we're focused on those elements. I think we kind of use the, the example of, from a materiality point of view, we need to develop uh, a range of materials that we can almost put our hand on our heart and say these are carbon zero. Once we've developed those materials, we'll then see what we have and how can we make a car from them. We'll then move into applied science. So this is more proof of concept, scale up, industrialization. And then finally, we'll embark on a, on a traditional vehicle program development. So I am um, 
very proud to present this kind of list to you. These are some of the companies that we're collaborating with. Um, there's a range of, of backgrounds there. So there's rare earth mineral suppliers, Penzana, UK PLC is one of our partners. Um, we've got uh, uh, some material polymizers, some, some um, uh, basically, uh, uh, Sorry, lost my words. I always stumble on this bit of the presentation, but basically all the way through the supply chain. So right, raw material, components, materials, and then uh, assembly. One of our partners is with us today, um, Paper Shell. So um, they're not you know, kind of big tier one, uh, like some of the people on that list, uh, ZF or Autoliv. They're traditional automotive tier one suppliers, but we can't rely on just talking to them. Um, with us today is uh, my colleague here, Anders, from uh, Paper Shell. Um, I'll hand over to Anders now. He can introduce his company and what he's yeah. about, and then we can move into the questions. All right, I'll, I'll do it really quickly. Um, I am a material nerd. Uh, I've spent 20 years as a material t uh, uh, tech scout, uh, working for sort of Fortune 500 companies, hunting for advanced, innovative, and or sustainable materials. And I've been standing on stage, being in workshops and discussing sustainability for 20 years. And I felt like it's enough. I mean, I have to do something. I have to do something tangible. And being sort of from Sweden and uh, Scandinavian, I thought, OK, let's focus on something that we are good at in Scandinavia and is a biosource. So, <laughs> In the cafe, I, I, I brought this. This is a sort of normal. I mean, this is this is a piece of paper. This is what we take a tree, which has 3.8 billion years of knowledge, and we turn it into toilet paper packaging. It's like I'm slightly embarrassed to be human when I think about that. So I thought, okay, let's do something with this. Can't we sort of slow down the paper cycle and make something more? Interesting. So what I'm holding in my hand is a material that basically what we do is we build back wood. So when you create paper, you lose hemicellulose and you lose lignin. And, you're, and we're talking millions of tons just in Sweden. So what we do, we take the paper and we reintroduce hemicellulose. And then we, uh, if you see on the pictures that I have just some, some slides, uh, we press it really, really hard in a f super automated lines, together with companies like Polestar and other segments. And what I think is cool is that I was reading with my kids about photosynthesis. I can't say the word. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. And I got it wrong. You know, you, that, you, know you have a tree, and the narrative is sorry, it breeds carbon dioxide and then breeds out oxygen. What's, a, what's cool with the tree is that it takes the carbon and then it takes the water from the ground. It doesn't sort of build itself from the ground. So trees are basically uh, <laughs> a carbon in a solid state. It's as atmospheric carbon. So paper shell is 100% biogenic. And if you change sort of, if you take aluminium or if you take plastic or glass fiber, you make an, a, a a reduction of between 90 to 98 percent, and that's with burning it end of life. So I, I have to get the clicker here. So what we are working on, I don't know where, where you see the, uh, the slide, but what we are working on is to take that carbon, turn it into components, you know, advanced engineering, and then getting it back into the ground, because then we will be carbon positive. And, you know, working with nature, and using, na teaming up with nature and the advanced engineering that exists in nature. So I, I'm not saying that we're any close to what nature does, but we can do so much more, and especially to, if we tra transition towards a circular bioeconomy. And with that, I stop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's really interesting. And I see you've got um, a couple of samples of the material there. We do. If you want to hold them up. Absolutely. So um, I think probably the key message uh, bringing this that it, it's not easy. You know, I'm an engineer. Um, 
This is a sample of a project we're working on. So this is in the advanced engineering space. So really with PaperShell, we're not waiting till 2030. We want to try and get these new low carbon materials into vehicles as soon as we can. This is a, a really early prototype um, that we've been working on. It's kind of tool trial one and a bit. Um, it's not perfect, as you can see, but we are learning from this. Um, and the aim is that you know, we, we take a real application. This is a rear seat cushion pan. Um, from one of our vehicles and understand how, the, how this will perform in an automotive environment. We have very, very high standards in terms of performance specification, quality specification. We need this part to be um, repeatable um, for all of our production over you know, seven years. We ask a lot of our supply partners and this is part of the learning and this journey we have to go on. Um, Paper Shell are a startup, they're, they're industrializing fast, but we, we as, a, as an OEM are asking them to be kind of um, uber quick and, and respond and meet all of our requirements um, and, and basically be able to, to supply to us in the automotive industry. So if we start making our cars from, from this product, are we, is it going to lead to sort of defore more deforestation and um, having to ship wood across from Canada like we do for our energy? Mm. I think that's a very good point. And I'll, I'll go back to this sort of single-use item, a napkin or, or, or a packaging material. If we want to pay respect to nature, we have to sort of slow down the cycle and to utilize sort of the biomasses uh, in a much more smart and, and uh, sustainable way. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, of course, to team up and utilize. One of the reasons why we teamed up with Polestar was the ambition of having a net zero ambition. Because by having an automotive company and other sort of big OEMs, you can also put pressure on the pulp and paper companies. So they change. I mean, if you look at the life cycle assessment, which means sort of the environmental impact, uh, today, uh, one kilo of ready-made component in paper shell is equivalent to 25% of the impact of an average Swedish lunch. And that impact does not come from our production. It comes from the forest management. So if we can put pressure on them and, and make them even more sustainable, that's great. And thirdly, like you see on the picture, getting it back into the ground instead of sort of taking fossils from the, from the crust and getting it up into the atmosphere, getting the carbon in this way and then helping to restore forests. Uh, and then the obvious question is like, we need to switch materials. Fossil-based materials, aluminum is actually mined in the, in the uh, Amazon forest. So we are, I'm not saying we're there, but we have to team up at, and, yeah, through the value chain to make a change. Okay, thanks. <laughs> and you, know, you talk about this carbon, truly carbon neutral car. How are you going to deliver through the rest of the supply chain? Uh, carbon zero, yeah. No, I think it's a very good question. So um, we have work streams that aren't just looking at products and materials. We have work streams looking at um, logistics and carbon zero logistics, materials handling equipment. You know, going back to the forestry example there, we're lobbying companies like Paper Shell to say to your supply base, you need to insist on electric powered equipment. Um, so there's a number of um, work streams we have, and the good thing about it is that in some cases, if we solve one problem for, for one system or component, we can then roll that out across other parts of the car. So we, we are addressing as part of the project all, all levels of the supply base. It's a big ask. Yeah. Yeah, it is a moonshot goal. <laughs> and uh, what's your confidence level on reaching this moonshot? I think that's a, it's a very good question. I think we, we're making some really good inroads with um, some of the raw materials. So, you know, we talked about this metaphor of having some ingredients and what can we make a car out of. So with initiatives like Paper Shell, with some of the other collaboration partners, we've got some really good materials now. We don't have all the answers, but I think, you know, we will, we will keep steadfast in our goal to, to, to carbon zero. Um, and I think one of the main messages, again, I'd like you to take away from this talk is that what we want to do is demonstrate that you can use this type of material in automotive production. A lot of car manufacturers are, some of them are fast followers, some of them are slow followers. They're populated by engineers that like to use the same material. So, hey, it worked well on the last program, let's de-risk, we'll use it again. I think what we're trying to do is break that paradigm, demonstrate you can do something differently, 
much cleaner from an environmental perspective and still keep the customer uh, satisfied by your offering. Okay, and this is clearly a really exciting partnership, so I'm just interested as to what you've learned so far and, and what sort of lessons for anyone in the audience also wanting to take on a Moonshot project. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, go for um, it. I think, so I've been in the automotive industry for 20 years. I think what I'm really enjoying and what is driving and kind of feeding me is the kind of energy and entrepreneurialism uh, with working with a company like Anders is. Um, the fact that, you know, you, we've got these shared goals and this kind of true passion to, to find um, greener solutions, greener materiality, but not, you know, a, a, a still kind of respecting the values of, of, of car production. So yeah, I'm, I, th I think just being part of something that is truly different and truly challenging, it's not easy. Um, maybe you've got some, some I mean, observations of working with the big bad car companies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think um, there are so many lessons learned uh, throughout the journey, but I think we were speaking about it you know, prior to this, that you, know, you have many aspects. It's not just the material, it's the production, it's the legal side, it's, mm -hmm. it's also uh, what we call sort of the elite soldier uh, approach to this. Because if we want to change and transition society, we have to, you know, we have to change uh, the, like, the, like the big players. That's where the impact can be. And then to have a poster, which is quite small brand, mm -hmm. but with strong ambitions, it, it gives us access to other segments because it is, I mean, if you want to be an, a, a tier one supplier to the automotive industry and there's one, like if something would be lying on the floor and it's not marked, then you fail the audit. So you really have to be focused and you have to be focused on many, many um, aspects. And that's what we like. I mean, you are pushing us and that's what we want. Mm. And again, I think it's, it's an important note. You know, you can't, you the, the, there is a lot, this valley of death philosophy, there's a lot of really good ideas that can't get across into automotive because our quality standards, our quality assurance protocols, uh, the repeatability that's demanded is, it's intensive heavy, it's resource heavy, it's very demanding. But that is the bit that I think as Polestar we can bring to these collaborations and to partnerships with, with companies like, like Paper Shell and our other collaborators and really prove it can be done. Mm. Fantastic. Well, thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.